let's learn if anything happens because with all my experience in aviation i doubt we will we would be allowed to have cell phones if it could affect our aircrafts i really doubt and for a fact i know all aircraft systems are such high power usually for transmission and receiving that it's gonna you're gonna be able to clear out all the noise of the cell phone radiation yep so let's learn together i do not think that the radio waves i have discovered will have any particular application <gasps> henrik hertz said that can you imagine the creator of the the this the person who discovered the radio wave that's responsible for all communication, all navigation, like GPS uses radio waves, uh, cooking, microwaves uses radio waves. We use radio waves to figure out how far a star system is or the end of the galaxy is. Radio waves are literally, in, oh my God, can you imagine discovering one of the most instrumental things in history and then saying that, uh, I don't think this is going to be anything useful. Wow. It's not like you discovered Bitcoin. Right now, invisible signals are flying through the air all around you. Beyond the spectrum of light your eyes can see, massive radio waves as wide as houses carry information between computers, GPS systems, cell phones, and more. In fact, the signal your phone broadcasts is so strong, if your eyes could see radio waves, your phone would be visible from Jupiter. At least your special eye. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, your cell phone radio waves are not that strong. He does not give a numeric uh, suggestion. He just says it's so strong you can see it from Jupiter. Uh, I guess he's comparing the strength of the signal to being able to see light from Jupiter. But uh, our batteries do not have the power capability to transmit something to Jupiter unless you have a very sensitive sen sensor over there so you can read it. That's why it's so difficult to communicate throughout the star system. We lose satellite communication all the time. Uh, that sounds doubtful right there would be able to see this if the sky wasn't flooded with interference well, there you go. from routers, satellites, if and you have course, a very sensitive people sensor. flying who haven't put their phones on airplane mode. You see, this setting isn't to protect your flight. It's to oh. protect everyone else in your flight path. Cell phones connect to networks by emitting information in the form of electromagnetic waves, specifically radio waves, which occupy this band of the electromagnetic spectrum. These radio waves come. So you're not doing it to protect yourself, but you don't want to, what, have radio signals at 40,000 feet in the air? In a range of wavelengths. And let's imagine your special eyes see the various wavelengths as different colors. When That's you make a call, your phone generates a radio wave signal, which it throws to the nearest cell tower. If you're far from service, your phone will expend more battery power to send a higher amplitude signal in an effort to make a connection. Once so what he's saying is our phone, our phones don't always transmit at the highest power. We have a dynamic variable transmitting rate. So I guess if you're up at 40,000 feet, since it cannot receive a signal and, and is not getting any confirmation, it's continuously transmitting at the highest wattage are available i mean that's believable because if you don't have a signal your phone dies faster i mean that seems very accurate connected this signal is relayed between cell towers all the way to your call's recipient since your call isn't the only signal out here cell towers managing the calls assign each phones involved their own wavelength this specific color ensures you're not picking up other people's calls it's even slightly different from the wavelength your phone is receiving information on. So, so every phone is working on a slightly different frequency? I did not know that at all. Learn something every day. So as not to interfere with that incoming signal. But there are only so many colors to choose from. And since the advent of Wi-Fi, the demand for ownership of these wavelengths 
has increased dramatically. With all these signals in the air and a limited number of colors to assign, avoiding interference is increasingly difficult. This is the issue the FA FCC was running. I feel like some bunch of big companies are trying to request a higher bandwidth so they can transmit further at certain frequencies, but the, FAA, uh, the FCC was saying, no, that is reserved for military use. So this is a pretty big thing. Especially when cell towers receive too many signals at once, such as during regional emergencies when everyone's trying to use their phones. But other sources of interference are more preventable, like phones searching for signals from thousands of meters in the sky. Phones on planes are very far from cell towers, so they work overtime to send the loudest signals they can in search of service. But since planes travel so quickly, the phones might find themselves much closer to a cell tower than expected, blasting it with a massive signal that drowns out those on the ground. So when you fly without using airplane mode, you're essentially acting as a military mm. radio jammer. Send wow. Wow. So military jammers, the way they work is they uh, listen for frequencies. They have really sensitive uh, ears. Let's call it that. And they listen for frequencies and those frequencies might be encoded. So you don't know what they're saying. You just know that something is communicating at this frequency range. And then what you do is do you disrupt that frequency by literally uh, running as so much noise over someone that you can't hear them. Imagine you have a two people's in a, two people in the hallway trying to talk with each other. That's not a problem, right? But imagine then you put 20 people between those two people in the hallway, and now those people are talking as well. You're gonna have a very hard time to listen. Um, the military jammers and radios have so many settings that between automatic settings try to fight each other. It's pretty crazy. So literally, <laughs> you're carrying a jamming system in your pocket because you can't receive anything. You're never near a tower long enough in a plane, but you, what you're doing is you're literally covering that spectrum with your signal and no one else can hear anyone. I mean, it's a pretty funny troll to me. Sending out giant radio waves that interfere with nearby signals. Even on the ground, almost all our electronics emit rogue radio waves, slowing down our internet and making our calls Thanks, choppy. Brad. This leads consumers to pay for more bandwidth pushing service providers to take over more of the radio spectrum and eventually send more satellites into the sky. Okay, so what you're saying is we should do this to mess with our providers. I got it. I'm learning everything I need to learn. Creating a vicious cycle that could eventually blot out the stars. Though even without these satellites, this system is threatening our relationship with the cosmos. Radio telescopes used for astronomy rely on a specific band of wavelengths to see deep into space. However, while this range is supposedly protected, the cutoffs aren't enforced. For example, oh my the God. very large array can... You mean we shouldn't do this because we like space and stars and science and we're ruining our, the discovery of everything else? Now I'm more willing to, to turn, put my... I mean, if I never put my phone on airplane mode before, I'm more willing to do that now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't wait till we discover what's next, you know. I'm not saying aliens, but um, look how much we have discovered since the Hubble. And what's the new satellite called? Uh, the James Webb. You know, how much we have discovered. And in my lifetime, I hope to see what new technologies, inventions, creations we come up with. Because I'm really curious where humanity ends up in technology. So me putting my plane uh, my phone on airplane mode will help scientists to look further into the, into space, into the universe. Yeah, now it's worth it to me. They they just freaking turned up the. Yeah, that, it's worth it now. God damn it! We should put our our phones on airplane mode and see signals throughout our solar we'll system. Learn something every from day. One to fifty gigahertz. But if it tries looking for signals below 5 gigahertz, its search could be drowned out by a sea of phones on 5G networks. Today, nowhere on Earth is truly radio quiet. 
satellites relaying signals around the globe have blanketed the planet in radio waves. But there are a few places with less crowded skies where radio telescopes can look deep look, in space. Fly through Here, spaces. we can see the black hole at the center of the Milky Way and uncover the secrets of galaxies up to 96 billion light years away. Well, so long as we're not blinded by phones yeah. sending signals from first class. Hey, I don't fly first class often, but this was good to learn. I did not know. I, I thought we should... I thought the reason we should put our air, uh, our uh, plane, our sorry, I thought the reason we should put our phones on airplane mode was to for the safety of the aircraft. I did not realize it stops our discovery.